I want to talk about dating and how that's evolved since you started speaking 20 years ago, because the complaint I often hear, you often hear, no doubt, I'm sure, is women saying like, I don't get asked out or men don't, you know, they, they don't want to date or I see, you know, and I know so many beautiful women in their 20s and their 30s who still aren't married. And it's, it's it can be heartbreaking. I don't mean to blame this all on the, yeah. on the dudes, but it's an epidemic. Because yeah. I, I think, and when I talk to women, or go, like I'll go to a, a daily mass at noon downtown in some city while I'm speaking, and you see all these attractive, young, single, professional women there, devout, and the guys aren't anywhere around. Or you go to Catholic young adult community sometimes, and it's, you know, four to one, you know, young, single women. And, uh, and I think what's going on is in China, you know, they've had this one-child policy for decades. And as a result, if you can only have one kid in China, you want a male passes on the family name, the males are esteemed so much more highly than the women. So the female babies are being aborted at an exponential rate compared to the male babies. Now that this has been going on for enough generations, you have a lot of single young Chinese males that are looking for a mate and she's not there because they were aborted by the millions and they're looking around and they're gone. I think we're having the opposite problem in America because of pornography. That men have been emasculated to such an extent that the women are reaching a level of marriage age and maturity and the guys are 24, but they're 12 years old emotionally. They're still playing their video games at home. They're afraid to ask a girl out without an app. They don't even know how to ask the girl out. And so the women are looking around like, wait a minute, God, I'm ready to raise a family and start having kids and doing this, but where are the decent guys? They're hooked on porn and they're playing video games and they're just not ready. And so, but there are good guys out there that aren't emasculated by porn, but that just don't know how to begin a relationship. They don't mm -hmm. know where to initiate. And I think because they don't know what to do, they get a little bit frozen. Mm -hmm. And this is why you wrote this book, The Dating Blueprint. This Is this out yet? Or it no? just came out yesterday. So this is going to come out. We're going to release this episode, I'm thinking, like Friday or thereabouts. So it'll it, be out. It just came out right oh, now. So right now. Yeah. No matter when we release it, it's going to be out. Yeah. So tell us about this book and how you did it. So well, we did the girls' book, How to Find Your Soulmate Without Losing Your Soul. And and all the girls like, you know, where's the book, you know, the where's the book for guys? And the yeah. guys like, I'm like, oh, guys don't read. Guys don't read. But then the guys kept Comic asking strip. me. Yeah, guys kept asking me like, no, 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 we really need something. And so I started to write the book for guys. And I just felt like the, the book was kind of missing something. Like its heart, its soul was kind of missing. And so what I did is I got online through Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And I said, girls... I'm writing a book for the guys, <laughs> and I need your input. Yeah. How would you ask? How would you want a guy to ask you out? Okay. How would you not want a guy to ask you out? Hey, let's say it's not going great. How would you want a guy to explain that to you instead of ghosting? And it, what, what kind of stuff, if a guy has in his life, do you want him to get rid of before he even asks you out to begin with? So I asked these tough questions because I realized like, men do really well if we have specific guidelines. Absolutely. And if we're spoken to in generalities, it's meaningless. Be a gentleman. Mm. Mm. Be a gentleman. You know, yeah. like my wife says, I need more help around the house. I'm like, mm, house big. You know, <laughs> she's like, take out the trash. I'm like, okay, now Got this is a conversation. Yeah. So I realized with the guys, well, what, they, what they're lacking is specifics. And so I went to the girls to get the specifics because they expect the men to know it, but they don't feel it's their place to tell them. Now you should have done this that way. And so, but I told the girls, hey, you tell me and I'll tell them. Mm. Boy, do the floodgates open. Do you do this on Facebook? Where'd you do it? It was on Facebook. It was on Instagram, Twitter to send it over, and YouTube. And literally within hours, the women, more than 1,500 women had submitted more than 30,000 words of content. <laughs> which is longer which than... Which is longer than the entire book was at that point. <laughs> and, uh, but it was gold. And I was going through this stuff and I'm like, man, I wish I knew this when I was 20. You know, and, I, and, and it was just... So I put all their advice into different little boxes. Okay, this is asking her out, and this is this, and dating etiquette, and this, that. And then I just started picking the best quotes from all of it. And I can't believe how much I learned through the whole process from beginning to end. And just the, the harmony between what all these women desired, whether they were posting from Brazil or the Ukraine or America, mm. it was all the same problems, and it was all the same longings. And so in the book, the third chapter is the longest, and that's where I get into. Because like the first chapter is like, okay, I asked the girls, what do you want the guy to get at? out of his life mm -hmm. before he asks you out four to one the most common response is porn like don't ask me out until you're done with that really? stuff and so the first chapter goes into that second chapter is like discernment when should you date and who should you date and i kind of give them this little grid like right girl right time wrong girl wrong time how do you know which one you're landed on and you know the, those questions of when and discernment dating then the third chapter is kind of, this is how to ask her out. Hmm. And that's the meat and the soul of the whole book where we walk them through the dating et etiquette from A to Z. You know, how to ask her out. And, and the input we got from the girls in that chapter was gold. Hmm. So, yeah. what are some of the things that they said to oh, you on Facebook well, and Instagram? I, 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 what I, did you learn? Well, I wrote some of them down. I just wrote two pages of some of the stuff. 
Um, first thing, like they do not want to be asked out in a text message. You know, this one what? girl, this one girl said, let me just say, <laughs> she has four Y's this? and it's all caps. So the <laughs> Kelly core school of texting, you know yeah. what that means. Um, let me just say the easier it is to ask a lady out, the easier it is for the lady to say no. Hmm. I was like, huh. And so when a guy asks her out through a text message, girls see it as cowardly and insincere because you're hiding behind a screen. And so when a guy asks a girl out face to face, there's a couple benefits. One, it shows you have a little bit of confidence. So that makes you a little bit more attractive. But also it makes her feel more attractive because she's not stupid. She knows you're putting it online. She knows you're facing rejection, mm -hmm. which means this guy values me enough to face the fear of rejection yes. face to face, yes. which makes me feel special. And so as opposed to he's hiding behind a screen, one of the girls was interesting. She said, if anything, um, I'll decline the offer if he asks me out through text, even if I do want to go out with a guy, only because he asked out over a text. Now, vice versa, if a guy were to ask me out in person and me not want to go out with him, I'd probably give it a shot just because he was confident enough <laughs> yeah. for the challenge. Yeah. And so that was the first gem is it needs to be face to face. Okay. Um, second thing that I found interesting, the, the clarity, women wanted you to say the word date when you ask them out. Okay. Not, hey, you want to hang out sometime? Some you want to get some coffee? We should get together sometime. Because the girl's like, hang out? What does he mean? Because girls overthink everything. And yeah. so like, what is he asking for? So <laughs> listen. I just want to point out that you just said girls overthink everything and that's going to be a takeaway oh, yeah. from some no, angry person. It's, it's in here. That is Leave true. it in the comments Continue. section. <laughs> no, that was a girl, something a girl said. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. So blame it on her. Yeah. So one girl said lots now of- Now he's blaming guys. women. Continue. That's what it's all about, the Matt Frad show. Um, <laughs> lots of guys will ask us if we want to hang out. No, we don't don't want to hang out. We have plenty of girlfriends to hang out with. What we want is for you to take us to do something fun that allows us to get to know each other better. Yes. One girl said, do not say, do you want to hang out? I've heard several guys ask me that. And it's so frustrating because I'm wondering like, are we just two friends getting together? Is this a date? Is he trying to pursue me? What is this? It's so confusing. I just wish a guy would say, hey, I'd really like to get to know you better. Can I take you on a date? Because okay. quote, being vague does not exactly make a girl go weak at the knees. That is a very good line. Oh, it's gold. And then so, so no texting. And then you got to use, use the, the word, word date. date. Third thing is no intermediaries. Basically, don't ask your friend to ask her friend if she likes you. Okay, look, sixth ah. grade is over, yeah. guys. Yeah, all right? Yeah. And, and one girl said, look, our relationship is between us, not the extra people around us. Be intentional, be clear, be courageous. Um, another thing, when a guy risks it, it shows even if he's nervous, it shows he has some confidence. One, yeah. one woman said, I can't even imagine being with a guy who won't take any risk. Hmm. And so you've got to be able to have the guts to put it on the line instead of hiding behind Tinder, you know, to, to buffet the blows of rejection. Another one is a planet. Um, women do not want to go on a movie for a first date universally. One yeah. girl said, movie, no, just no. Like, wow. Uh, all right, then. She said, if you go on a date with me, take me somewhere we get to talk and actually get to know each other. You oh can't do gosh. that in silence for two hours yeah. in a movie. Yeah. Date, go, go on a movie, third or fourth date, not the first or second. Excellent. That's um, really good. This is my favorite one of all the feedback of okay, 30,000 words. Go. Do not, Matt Frad. <laughs> Offer a Netflix and chill or take me to a sketchy warehouse or some weird lot and tell me about your felony record speaking from experience. What? <laughs> so the moral of the story is if you have to tell a girl about your history of incarceration, you want to take her to a fancy a, dinner, not a sketchy lot. Or so. at least a public place yeah, yeah. where so, you can't murder her. Exactly. Yeah, she doesn't yeah, have so, to fear for that. So you never know what she's been through. <laughs> I asked the girls, like, what's one thing you'd want a guy to stop doing in his life? And one girl put on there, she's like, not going to the duck pond with your ex-girlfriend i'm like okay yeah. You know? yeah you're like i'm not gonna i'm not nope. sure if that's one thing i'm gonna tell yeah. everybody no nope. actually do. i did put it in the book <laughs> <laughs> so, um this one was interesting uh she said pace yourself she says Dis don't tell me you want to marry me call to marry me discernment is done with the person not for or about them before you even date and so this idea that I'll do the sermon and then I'll choose you yeah. instead of like, no, 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 we discern together. Yeah. This is a process. Now, if she says no, I remember uh, you got to take it gracefully. Paul Kim once said, hey, look, yeah. if she says no, that's fine. You've just narrowed down your search for your future spouse by one person. And to me, if she says no, it's kind of asking a girl out is kind of a win-win because you either end up with a date or you end up with clarity, um, either of which is better than being uncertain and alone. And so you got to put it out there. And then the last couple things, one, no ghosting. Yeah, this is a new term that old people like me have just heard about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And ghosting is when you express an initial attraction mm -hmm. and then you kind of lose interest and fade into oblivion. Yeah. And, and, and for girls, it's torturous because it's like, okay, where are you? 
Like, do you like another girl? Or are you just really busy? Did you get abducted by aliens? Like, what exactly is going on? Mm. And what's going on is the guy doesn't really have the character to have a hard conversation. And so, well, I don't want to hurt her, so I'll just disappear. But that's torturous to the girls because they end up, you know, for months feeling like, what did I do wrong? Like, mm. is he coming back? What is going on? Yeah, you would. she would much rather him say, yeah, I'm not and, interested anymore. And, and that's what they said. One, This was great. She said, an ending to a relationship should be just as intentional and clear as our first date. And so what's mm, interesting like is that. like, if I want to ask a girl out, it requires some vulnerability, some honesty, some courage, some confidence, sincerity. Yeah. But that's kind of easy to muster up because there's something in it for me because mm. I might end up with a date. Yeah. But how about when it comes time to saying goodbye? Am I willing to be honest and sincere and all these things when there's nothing in it for me? Yeah. There's only in it something for her, for clarity. That's a much better mark of a gentleman. And it was funny, while I was writing this whole thing, I had quit my gym because I wanted to find a new one. So I was trying out all these different CrossFit gyms and trying to switch over to that. And I, I got free memberships for a week in three gyms and I was trying them out and doing all this <laughs> stuff. And then uh, I picked one. I'm like, I really like this one. It was the most intense. There's a Nike commercial film there. The trainers were awesome. And, uh, and then I was getting these texts from one of the managers of the other gym. And he was like, hey, Jason, just want to check in and see if yeah. you like your free membership and you want to join. And I had the text and I'm like, oh, I'll answer that later, you know, because I'm not joining <laughs> yeah. his gym. And I'd work on the book. I'm writing about no, t no ghosting. And then and the text comes up and I'm like, ah. Oh. I'm like, wait a minute, I'm doing it. Yeah. Like, I'm a grown man and I'm yeah. ghosting the manager of a CrossFit gym because I don't want to have a hard conversation. I said, you know what, I'm doing it right now. And I texted it and I said, you know, hey, I really appreciate, you know, the training, the sessions, I had a good time, but I ended up picking a gym closer to my kid's school. I wish you all the best. Two minutes later, text me, hey man, thank you a lot for, the, you know, let me know. I really appreciate that. Yeah, and I'm sure and that is a common occurrence of men not writing back or women not writing back. Yeah, because yeah. it's an awkward conversation. You don't want to have it. Yeah, and we need to grow up and have them. Yeah. And, and because we can't all marry everybody. You know, not every relationship's going to work out. Yeah. And what you're doing is you're freeing up that person to find someone who could be a better match for them instead of dragging things on and this lack of clarity. You know, but one, one girl added, she said, don't then pop back in when it's convenient for you and use me as your emotional fidget spinner, as my friend put it, whenever you're bored. Meaning, if you're gonna break up, at least commit to the breakup. Instead of floating back in and out and leaving this girl wondering for six months, what on earth is going on? Mm. And so a big piece of all this is intentionality and clarity. And it's funny, when I was writing it, I, I kind of had this flashback, I dated this girl, in college for two years, we had a wonderful, awesome relationship. And as it was kind of coming to a close and we were breaking up, we we're still really good friends. She shared with me, you know, Jason, one thing that kind of bothered me when we dated um, for these last two years is that you never really asked me out. <laughs> and I'm like, huh? what? And, 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 and like outside, I'm kind of playing it cool, but inside my brain is like fact checking, like CNN, <laughs> like CNN during a Trump debate. Like he said, what? what? That can't be wrong. Find the, find the fact. Yeah. So my brain is like fact checking. Like, no, I know I must have asked her out. Like when we went to Florida, when she met my parents, like, I, and I like, huh, she's right. I never asked her out. And then I kind of thought, huh, I did the same thing with the last two girls I dated mm. in college. I dated three girls for a total of five years in college, and I never asked a single one of them out. Mm. And it was one, we were in tribe on wedding rings. And what had happened what? is- You were trying on wedding rings with a girl and you never asked her out? Yeah, I never asked her out. Didn't, but we were dating it, We were dating for two come years up. because it just evolved yes. into it. Because I'm like, we're friends, now we're hanging yeah, out with group yeah, friends, yeah. now we're gonna kind of go solo. Yeah. And it was obvious to everybody in the world that we're dating, obvious except perhaps to her. Wow. You know, and then by within a couple of years of it is obvious, yeah, we're committed. But I realized like, wow, and I wasn't trying to avoid commitment commitment yeah. or a rejection it was just like hey we just kind of morphed into a dating relationship yeah but this is pandemic where people right now we have a culture of single people who pretend like they're dating we have a culture of dating people who behave like they're married now we have a culture of married people who think they're single everything's out of order wow. and so we need to quit sliding into the next stage meaning okay i want to be with that guy so i'm going to hook up with him and then maybe he'll commit to me oh i really like this person now we're dating we'll live together before we get married we're, we're not deciding into these stages of relationships yeah. with clarity. We're just, just morphing from one into the other, evolving. But I, I think we want the clarity. But it involves guys knowing you need to be intentional. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you will absolutely love the full interview. So click right there to enjoy the whole thing. Also, a big thanks to these groups who made that interview possible. Learn more in the show notes below about these guys. They're absolutely incredible and honored to have them as sponsors. Oh, and also, if you haven't subscribed yet, click subscribe and then that bell button. That way, YouTube will be forced to let you know when we put out more content.